السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المسلمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله تعالى we'll continue with سورة الطلاق سورة الطلاق uh, سورة نمبر 65 سورة نمبر 65 verse number 1 we'll take the first verse إن شاء الله تعالى from سورة الطلاق we had finished سورة التغابن And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless these sessions and to make us among those who learn and act upon their knowledge by the mercy of Allah. Okay, uh, open the Mus'haf inshallah, we'll recite the verse first and then we'll talk about the surah inshallah and that first verse inshallah. It's a long, so, uh, long verse, so uh, when we stop it, it's not necessarily that this is the proper way to stop when you're reciting, it's just for the purpose of... Uh, Learning to recite, to recite, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu idha talakotumun نساء فطلقوهن لعدتهن فطلقوهن لعدتهن وأحصوا العدة واتقوا الله ربكم لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن ولا يخرجن إلا أن يأتين بفاحشة مبينة وتلك حدود الله ومن يتعد حدود الله فقد ظلم نفسه لا تدري لعل الله يحدث بعد ذلك أمرا يا أيها النبي ترز مد هير يا أن أيها النبي تنون الشدة تكس تو كونس إذا طلق طلق تمنس the طاء is heavy and the قاف is قلقلة طلق طلق make sure that the طاء is not تاء and then the lamb is light طلق تمن and then the نون الشدة تكس تو كونس طلق تمن نساء four to five counts فطلقوهن نون الشدة two counts لعدتهن two counts وأحصوا العدة وأحصوا the همزة is light and then the حاء and the صاد is heavy وأحصوا العدة واتقوا الله ربكم ربكم heavy لا تخرجوهن نون الشدة takes two counts من بيوتهن نون والسكون after الباء أكلاب the meme sound then make sure that the باء is وتضم من بو من بيوتهن النون والشدة takes two counts ولا يخرجنا the جيم قلقلة ولا يخرج ولا يخرجنا إلا four to five counts أي إضغام وضغنة أي يأتينا بفاحشة إضغام بفاحشة مبينة the same thing two counts وتلك حدود الله ومن two counts ومن يتعد حدود الله فقد بدل وثقل قلة فقد ظلم نفسه لا تد لا تدري بدل وثسكون قلة لعل الله يحدث بعد ذلك أمرا The translation of the ayah 
O Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam When you divorce women Divorce them at their idda And count their idda And fear Allah your Lord And turn them not out of their homes Nor shall they leave Except in case they are guilty Of some open illegal uh, relations And those are the set limits of Allah And whosoever transgresses the set limit limits of Allah, then indeed he has wronged himself. You, meaning the one who divorces his wife, know not. It may be that Allah will afterward bring some new thing to pass. And this will be, inshallah, explained. So first of all, uh, this surah, it's called Surah Al-Talaq, and it's obvious. Uh, the name of it is, be- is based on the fact that the, most of the surah or a big portion of the surah talks about some of the rulings of divorce. And uh, some call it, uh, some calls the surah, gives the name of the surah, Al-Nisa, uh, Al-Qusra, or the or Nisa, surah, the, the minor Al-Nisa, like Surah Al-Nisa, you know, in Surah Al-Nisa is a big surah. So some would call it Al-Nisa Al-Qusra, or the small Al-Nisa, because it's a small surah compared to Surah Al-Nisa. Uh, of course, it was revealed in Medina, and it's very obvious because of the rulings and the surahs that has rulings, for the most part, was revealed in Medina. Uh, and there was a, you know, sabab and nuzul, as it's mentioned uh, in Sahih Muslim and others, that uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, uh, he divorced his wife when she was in her menses. And he asked the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Prophet ﷺ told him to take her back. And he has to take her back. And then he told him that if she becomes pure, meaning after the menses, then either he divorce or he keeps it, keeps her. And the verses were revealed. So therefore, and you see one of the, way, uh, the ways of the Qur'an, as we heard in the ayah, it says, Ya Yuhan Nabi, O Prophet of Allah, when you divorce women, what is meant by this? is the Prophet ﷺ, of course, because he's the messenger of Allah and his ummah, and the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. It was said also in some of the books of the tafsir that the Prophet ﷺ divorced Hafsa radiallahu anha, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to take her back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, so the surah has some of these ahkam, some of these rulings with the talaq, with the divorce, and the idda, the waiting period afterwards, and all of these types of rulings uh, is based on wahi, based on revelation from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. And uh, the people, they need to either have this knowledge or they ask the people of knowledge so that no vulm and no transgression and evil uh, actions as a result of disobeying the orders of Allah. So uh, the first ayah, uh, and other things, of course, uh, the verse mentions not just uh, talaq, not just matters of talaq, but there is also the issues of witnessing on the talaq and the taking the wife back, uh, breastfeeding, uh, some form of consultation between the parents when it comes to the situation of their children, uh, and the, the the verses in the surah that talks about the the reward from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for those who fear Allah and are dutiful to Allah shows. How that the command to fear Allah, to be dutiful to Allah, is within the ahkam, within the rulings of something like divorce and marriage. And uh, this is all part of the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to take lessons from the nations before. Uh, and the great honor to be among those who receive the wahi, the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the power of Allah, and the knowledge of Allah. So, um, so again, this call, Ya Ayuhan Nabi, it is not exclusive to the Prophet ﷺ. It uh, means the Prophet ﷺ and the Ummah because the Prophet ﷺ is the one that would apply the, the verses and educate his Ummah with his speech and actions ﷺ. And the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, they follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ. So it's basically this addressing the Prophet ﷺ in words and the meaning of it is for the Prophet والسلام, and for the believers. And this is uh, an honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honoring the Messenger وسلم, by saying, Ya Ayuhan Nabi, O Prophet of Allah, like Ya Ayuhan Rasul, 
So calling the Prophet والسلام, with the best uh, job and that is to be the messenger of Allah, the final messenger of Allah. Uh, and that is the Prophet So the ayah If you divorce uh, your women, uh, that means if women are divorced and the one that divorce is uh, the man divorces. As we know that if a woman, for example, she's not able to live with her husband anymore, then she does not divorce. She either asks for divorce if there's grounds for divorce because he's not fulfilling her rights or if he, if she's not able to prove that or he is fulfilling her rights but she's not able to live with him. And that's a very, uh, it's, it's a situation that should be uh, not um, be at ease with it because it's people who are required to be patient with one another. But if there's a the way out in certain circumstances, to put it that way, is the khula for the women. So here the ayah, Ya Yuhal Nabiyu, Ida Talakotum Nisa. And since we're referring to the tafsir of Imam Sa'di, Rahimahullah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, O Prophet of Allah, Ida Talakotum Nisa, Ida Talakotum in the plural tense. So that, that's a very obvious, obvious uh, also uh, explanation that what is meant by this is not just the Prophet, Ariyu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that means if you want to divorce the woman, not that if you divorced the women. So if you want to divorce your wives, <coughs> basically it says, seek the proper way and do it in the proper way. Do not be in haste. Do not just divorce once there's a, a reason for the divorce without uh, recognizing the commands of Allah. And that's a very serious command here because... Uh, many people, many people, actually, it's not exaggeration. If we say most of the people, most of the men, when they divorce their wives, they just do it as an as as a as an instant or a moment of anger or something that you just say the words of the of talaq in a without any uh, thinking or any planning for it or anything like this, and then just they do it. They do it. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is calling the believers. Through the Prophet ﷺ, that means if you want to divorce your women, so that means there has to be some uh, serious uh, steps to be taken before that and to know the rulings and the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if they say the words of talaq, then the consequences of it is very uh, serious. So uh, this is the significance of if you divorce the woman, that means if you want to divorce. Uh, you plan to divorce uh, your wives. And there's other verses in the Quran that talks about how to first uh, avoid this with all kinds of, of means. So when we look at a verse that talks about a specific rulings, it doesn't mean that to overlook the other verses. So here, uh, which means, uh, therefore then, divorce them, to a, a very specific idda or a counted period, right? That means uh, this is uh, if a man wants to divorce his wife, he has to divorce her when she is in a, a time when she does not have her menses and they did not have intimate relationship. So these two conditions have to be met for the talaq to be a correct one. And it shows that it's not a spontaneous talaq that happens at a moment of anger. So it has to be in a, in a time when she is not in her menses. And uh, in that time of where she is uh, without the menses, that means from the time that she was purified from the last menses, till he divorced, they did not have relations whatsoever. Uh, so therefore, the talaq here is the idda is very clear. The idda will be very clear or the counted time after the talaq will be very clear. Because if he divorced her when she is in her menses, this menses is not going to count because the idda of the talaq, the idda for the talaq to be final, to be irrevocable, has to be three menses. So if he divorces her in the time of menses, then this one period of menses is not counted that he divorced her in. And then that means the idda for her becomes longer, as some of the ulama they mentioned. So if he does this, first of all, and this is uh, just a mention of some of the wisdom behind it. But also, you know, Allah knows best how people are different when they are in the time of the menses and things like this. And to wait and uh, to avoid and many people when they divorce, they regret it and they want to take it back and things like this. 
So to think about it and to have it, uh, you know, uh, as a last resort and not to be done in the time of menses, and one of which is that the idda will be longer that way. Uh, and also that if he uh, if he divorces his wife in a in a time where she's pure and they had relations, she might be also pregnant. So that is not going to be uh, uh, clear unless you would have the the, the menses. So if they had uh, if they were not in the time of menses and they had relations and he wants to divorce his wife, he has to wait. He has to wait till the period come comes. And then she's purified from it. And then after that, he still wants to divorce. It's the divorce in that time of purity. And they did not have relations. And this is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see how the verses will come for people to fear Allah, to be dutiful to Allah, and not to belittle or overlook these rulings and ahkam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered to count the idda, to make sure that it's known, the idda, which is, the idda here refers to the counted time after the divorce, till the divorce is irrevocable, and within the idda, he can take his wife back if it's the first or the second divorce. He has the right to do so. If the idda passes, then uh, you know it has to be a, a new contract, and she can refuse and things like this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, commanded for the idda to be counted, uh, whether it's with the, with the menses, and it would also show in the, the verses to come that it can be by the months if she is not someone that has menses. She's old in age or so. She doesn't get her menses, then it's three months. And uh, if also if she's not pregnant. And this is to uh, establish the haqq, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rights of the divorced husband and the rights of the one that she would might divorce afterwards and the rights that she would be given some uh, money to be spent on her and things like this. So there's so many different benefits and obligations and important rulings as a result of making sure that the hidda is precise and it's counted in the right way. So all of that is involved in making sure that the hidda is correct uh, and, to be know, and to see it or to be upon it with basira, with clear vision and clear understanding because of the rights that are observed as a result of this. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَحْصُ الْعِدَّةِ Count the idda, make sure that it, this is a, a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that it's, uh, it's not overlooked. Whether she does it or someone else, if she's not able to count it or whatever, but things has to be done in the right way. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your Lord in all of your affairs and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the rights of your wives, in the rights of the divorced ones, in the rights of everyone. And that, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not uh, take them out of their homes, meaning at the time of the idda. When a man divorces his wife and during the idda time, she is to stay in the house of her husband, to stay there. And he has the right to take her back and she does not wear hijab in front of him. Right? And... Uh, in the past, in which would a man would uh, drive his house, uh, his wife outside of the house when he divorces her, this is forbidden. And the same thing nowadays you would find if a man divorces his wife, she leaves the house. No, it's not permissible. She's supposed to stay in the house if it's the first or the second divorce. And uh, this is all means for them to be back again together and it counts as a divorce, of course, till the idda is over, till the idda is finished. Wala yakhruj. So do not drive them out, do not take them out, and for them not to go out. Clearly stated that also for the women not to leave. It is not permissible for her to leave if her husband divorces her, the first or the second divorce, within the time of the idda, Because this is her house, this is her place of marriage that she's supposed to stay in. Till the idda is completed. Uh, and um, and the, the nahi here forbidden from, uh, for her to go out uh, and this is uh, not fulfilling the rights even of the husband that the marriage is still in place and this is also another meaning that many people they don't pay attention to if the man divorces his wife the first or the second divorce within the time of the idda they are still considered to be married there is, this is a, a period or a transition one because he can take her back and it counts as a divorce or if, she, if he waits till the idda is over then the divorce is final that's why she doesn't wear hijab and she, you know, just normal uh, being in the house. And if they have relations, then she's back 
automatically to her husband. إِلَّا يَأْتِينَ بِفَحِشَةٍ مُبَيِّنَةٍ Unless the, the woman, for example, she commits an evil sin, a very clear and open, that would necessitate for her to go out so that the harm does not come into the house uh, hold without taking her out. Whether, for example, if she, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, an evil sin with uh, in relations, but also can be anything that is very clear that it's causing so much harm. Like, for example, she is being rebellious or screaming or uh, or causing harm or things like this, uh, you know, or she's going to hurt herself or, you know, something like this. Uh, because for her to stay, it's it's for the for her benefit to start with. But it is not permissible for her to leave unless, of course, there's clear harm or something that is beyond one's capacity. And this is in the Mu'atadda or the one in the Idda, in the revocable divorce. First and the second one. But if it's the third one, of course, she has to leave and they cannot live together. And this is, of course, in the case that the house is owned by the husband, of course. This is the limits. These are the limits of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made it and legislated for the ummah that people have to observe it and not to transgress it. Whoever transgress the limits of Allah uh, by not observing it, he had wronged himself, wronging oneself by ruining oneself and making a person's oneself uh, subjected to the punishment of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تدر لعل الله يحدث بعد ذلك أمر. It's a part of the verse that is referred to or related to the subject of divorce, but it becomes or it became um, a, a principle or a, a, a word of wisdom uh, that is can be applied for many different things, which here it means you do not know maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will introduce or initiate something after this matter. Meaning if it's related to the divorce and the idda, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the idda in such a way and made the divorce in such a way for a great wisdom. One of which is maybe that things will change. You were extremely angry with each other and they hated so much each other, but then once the divorce happened, and this is something that you see clearly in the lives of many people. They have been living in such a life that they cannot wait till they divorce. And one day, once they divorce, they can't wait till they go back again together. So because of the rahmah, the, the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have in their hearts, so they would then the divorce would not be final and they would be back again together and to continue the, the relationship, especially if there is children and, and the great benefits of avoiding the divorce. So this, these are rulings. Is one of this one of the wisdom is because of this, uh, and and sometimes people would think you know, and, and this is general in life. Uh, a person is not appreciating something that he has, uh, or a child, for example, or anyone. Uh, he people hate their house, for example, so much. They 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 are so impatient with it. This is a terrible house. This is this and so on, and then. Uh, they, they go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree for them to be in a situation where they see those who are less than them or uh, something happens uh, that they would appreciate so much that they have such a, a house and not something, not, not anything else. And they would, you know, hold fast to it and they would not sell it, for example. I mean, just worldly matters. So the same thing, a person is complaining or a wife is complaining of her husband and things like this. So when divorce happens, sometimes then it, it strengthens the relationship because they had weakened it, so it strengthens it when they go back again together because they would see how much they are in need of one another. So, you don't know. Maybe that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will initiate something in a matter that, and this is, becomes a general benefit in all of our life. If you are in a, in a difficult situation or a difficult relationship or something like this, you don't know what's going to happen afterwards. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change things. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the hearts and change things to be best. And that's why people need to think good about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially if they apply the commands of Allah and they are sincere, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And again, uh, and many other benefits that can be uh, explained in the light of, uh, of these verses. Uh, but because of the time, we'll... Uh, We'll stop here, inshallah. And of course, the the, the meaning of uh, of the words, uh, Ya Yuhan Nabi, of course, O, o Prophet of Allah, 
إذا طلقتم إذا إف طلقتم طلقتم فم طلقة طلقة and it's it's uh, the the rule or the root of it is when something is let loose when something is uh, is let loose after it's been uh, tight or you know and this is how relationships is uh, a person is is not free to do whatever they want when they are in a relationship like marriage and so on. So the talaq that means it's the, it's relieving this relationship or ending this relationship. So إذا طلقوا تم النساء and uh, and when you say أطلقت البعير so إذا طلقوا تم النساء النساء the women from being known uh, seen well فطلقوهن then divorce them and as you see there's a lot of the noon at the end is for the feminine feminist uh, tense فطلقوهن then Divorce them. لعدتهن for the عدة the lamb and then عدة from عدد count and then the noon for women. لعدتهن for the counted days. وأحصو and keep count from ح صاد يا أحصو and the well at the end is the plural. الإحصاء statistics the science of statistics is called إحصاء counting and the hadith للي تسعة وتسعين اسما to Allah is ninety nine names من أحصاها دخل الجنة over counts them. Or comprehend, comprehend them, he will enter the jinn. So, وأحصو and count and keep count of العدة. The waiting period comes from عدد. واتقوا الله and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Waqa. واتقوا الله ربكم your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your Lord. لا تخرجوهن. Do not take them out. From خرجة going out. So, you do not take them out. You do not drive them out. You do not expel them. لا تخرجوهن من بيوتين from their homes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it their homes. Even though the house is owned by the husband. For example, if it's owned by the husband, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, called it their homes. So, do not, it is not permissible to take them out of them. If they are divorced and the divorce is final, then yes, the house belongs to the husband if it belongs to the husband. ولا يخرجنا and they should not leave from خرجة they should not leave إلا except أي أتينا بفريشة أي أتينا they would come come with the noon at the end for the feminist بفريشة وذا فريشة morality sin نيجي sin مبينة which means clear from بين from something بين something clear وتلك and that is of what is mentioned حدود الله ليس ذا حدود from ح دال دال the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's not permissible for someone to transgress the limits of Allah وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ فُمْ عِيْنَ دَلْوَاو to transgress حُدُود the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ indeed to make it very clear فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ transgressed wronged نَفْسَهُ his own self لَا تَدْرِي تدري means no. You do not know from دال راء يا. Don't you don't know لعل maybe. It's for something to happen in the future. لعل الله هذا maybe Allah سبحانه وتعالى يحدث. Initiate bring something. Bring something from هذا that bring something that you don't even expect. بعد after which is time wise. بعد ذلك لعل تدري لعل الله يحدث بعد ذلك أمر أمتر. Let's open like this. You don't know what even this matter is. Do not even think of maybe this will happen or maybe that will happen. Maybe something completely different. Uh, maybe you were hesitant and it becomes more even clearer and so on. So leave the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, we'll stop here inshallah. We'll continue tomorrow with more of the verses of the surah inshallah. Because of that. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi 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 wa rahmatullah